conception of the determinateness of conceptual norms. What semantic purity claims conceptual contents are pure of is contamination by the epistemic, that is, by knowledge claims, by judgments as to how things actually are. The semantics of concepts, Hegel's universals, is supposed not to depend at all upon epistemic commitments, that is, on judgments, on the application of those universals to particulars in judgment. Hegel's slogan for the conceptual sea change he sees as necessary for appreciating the interdependence of semantic and epistemic commitments is that we must move from understanding the conceptual in terms of the static categories of Verstand to understanding it in terms of the dynamic categories of Vernunft, adapting Kant's terminology to his own use. Kantian concepts are determinate in the Verstand sense in that the rational relations of consequence and incompatibility between concepts which identify and individuate them are taken to be fully settled in advance of any application of those universals to particulars in judgment. Kant envisaged an asymmetric structure of capacities in which a faculty of spontaneity is the source of universals which are applied to particulars supplied by a faculty of receptivity. In developing his successor Vernunft conception, Hegel takes over from Kant his insight into the normative character of concept use and radicalizes it by construing the relations between universals and particulars itself in normative terms of authority and responsibility. Hegel says independence and dependence. Hegel takes his cue from the fact that transposed into the normative key, the relations of authority and responsibility between universals and particulars are reciprocal and symmetric. Kant's system masks that underlying symmetry by an artificial asymmetric division of semantic and epistemic labor. Spontaneous exercises of the semantic authority of the understanding, Verstand, over universals are for Kant independent of and prior to exercises of the epistemic authority of particulars which determine the correctness of application of universals to those particulars in judgment. This overarching asymmetric structure is a manifestation of Kant's understanding of freedom and reason in terms of autonomy, what Hegel calls pure independence. According to Hegel's symmetric normative construal of the relations of authority and responsibility between universals and particulars, the application of one concept or universal obliges one to apply others to that particular according to rational relations of consequence that, that articulate the content of the concept or universal. And it precludes one from being entitled to apply others to that particular, according to relations of rational incompatibility that also partially articulate the content of that concept or universal. This is the authority of universals over particulars, the responsibility of particulars to universals. There's a corresponding relation of authority of particulars over universals. For it can happen that one applies a concept, a universal to a particular, and the particular does not cooperate in also exhibiting the universals that are its consequences, or in also exhibiting universals that are incompatible with the original one. This Hegel construes as the particular exercising authority over the universal, telling it, as it were, that it cannot have the consequence and incompatibility relations that it originally came with. That is, that a different universal is required. For Hegel, none of these reciprocal relations of authority and responsibility between universals and particulars should be understood as purely semantic, nor as purely epistemic. The clean division of semantic and epistemic labor is an artifact of semantically naive two-stage accounts. Our judgments shape our concepts no less than our concepts shape our judgments. Hegel understands determinateness, his bestimmtheit, in terms of what he calls individuality, Einzelheit. Individuality, in turn, is a matter of the characterization of a particular by a universal, which is something that has the form of a fact or a judgment. As Kant emphasized, concepts shape and articulate judgments. Hegel adds the idea that judgment is a process by which concepts are determined. The essence of Hegel's Vernunft conception is an account of the structure of the dynamic process in which the whole constellation of concepts and judgments develops by the exercise of the reciprocal authority of universals over particulars and particulars over universals. Judging the application of universals to particulars is the development of individuals, 
At once the semantic shaping and determining of universals and the epistemic discovery of which universals apply to which particulars. Kant's pure independence model of semantic authority as untrammeled by corresponding responsibility leaves it unclear what room there remains for epistemic constraint. Why cannot the boundaries, the implications and incompatibilities of the universal that's been applied simply be redrawn to accommodate any looming recalcitrance? More deeply, what even counts as changing the content of a concept or universal for Kant? What holds fixed in advance the commitments one undertakes by applying it if its content is wholly up to the spontaneous activity of the subject? The Kantian division of semantic and epistemic labor seems unable to exclude the possibility that, as Wittgenstein puts it, whatever seems right to me is right, in which case the issue of right doesn't get a grip. There's just nothing in the Kantian picture to confer determinate contents on concepts, nor to hold them in place as determinate. What's needed, Hegel thinks, is to replace Kant's individualist model, driven by his understanding of freedom as autonomy, with a social one. What Kant tried to accomplish within the boundaries of a single knowing subject by the division of semantic and epistemic labor should be done rather by a genuinely social division of labor. Concepts for Hegel are not to be found between the ears of individual knowers, but in the public language that they speak. Language, he said, is the Dasein of Geist. This transposition of the issue into a social linguistic key makes it clear how in judging, whose paradigm now becomes asserting, I can bind myself by norms provided by the concepts I apply to particulars. It is, for instance, wholly up to me whether I assert that the coin is made of copper rather than, say, manganese. But it's then not up to me what else I've committed myself to by claiming that and what would entitle me to that commitment. The metallurgical experts in my community that my community charges with the care and feeding of the concept of copper will hold me responsible for having committed myself to the coins melting at 1,084 degrees C and having precluded myself from claiming that it's an electrical insulator. Whether I know about these implications is neither here nor there. They're features of the move I've made in the language game. And it's my participation in that game that permits me also to think, quietly to myself, that the coin is copper, a thought that inherits its shared content from claimables whose sense the community fixes. On this model, the authority of the individual speaker is balanced by a reciprocal responsibility. And the content I freely committed myself to and made myself responsible for is held in place as determinate by my fellow speakers, whom I've authorized to hold me responsible for it. What I'm responsible for is what I've said, not what I might later claim to have meant. What Heidegger called the dignity and spiritual greatness of German idealism is founded on Kant's reconstruel of self-conscious selfhood as consisting in freedom, in the sense of authority, specifically the authority to commit oneself determinately, the capacity to bind oneself by conceptual norms, to make oneself responsible to norms that are rational in the sense that they articulate what's a reason for, for a judgment or an action that has that content. Hegel sees that self-consciousness in this normative sense is an essentially social achievement. The authority to make oneself responsible makes sense only in a context in which one can be held responsible. And that requires two loci of authority and responsibility. Normative statuses, such as authority and responsibility, and the selves that are the subjects of such statuses, Hegel teaches, are instituted by reciprocal recognition that is, by individuals practically taking or treating one another as authoritative and so responsible, as having the authority to make themselves responsible. Those I recognize in this normative sense of authorizing them to hold me responsible form a recognitive community. In telling language, Hegel says that self-conscious individual selves, normative subjects, are instituted only when particular biological organisms come to stand in recognitive relations to one another, a matter of their practical normative attitudes, and so come to be characterized by the universal that is the recognitive community. That's his model for how universals, particulars, and individuals are related. <clears throat> 